What's going on guys? Matt here with Outer Rim. Come to you with a tech deck video. I'm here with Steven who finished second place. Where? Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. So Steven, tell us a little bit quickly about the uh, regional. What did you decide you want to play? When did you decide you wanted to go with this deck and why? Um, so I knew I was going quite a while ago. Um, I don't know, it seemed like the hot de deck of the week. Um, I played Snoke and Tarkin before. I played a lot of Snoke. I played a lot of Tarkin in the past. I liked the way the deck uh, operates. I felt comfortable with it. Um, a little choppy with it going into it, however, just trying to get the mechanics down um, because of the inclusion of the fist and things like that. It's not as easy as it used to be just throwing down zero upgrades. But uh, I don't know, it just felt good. I didn't really have another option. The Sienna uh, Beckett deck crashed in Birmingham, so <laughs> we just kind of put that to the side, and um, which is ironic because I put about three, four weeks tech reps into that deck and put about a week into this. So. Yeah, you had, a, you had a lot of reps with Sienna Beckett, I um, and I think you sort of steered at the last minute towards this. Let's go back to that mechanics point you were talking about. Okay. Be a little bit more specific about what you mean with the mechanics of the deck. Let's go ahead and put Snoke and Tarkin okay. out. Look how beautiful these cards are. Yep. My gosh, this man is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about let's talk about these two characters real fast. So we'll All get right, to the so. mechanics of it. So so Tarkin with his power action and Snoke with his power action. How do they interact together, and why are these two almost fitted perfectly for each other? So there's a lot of synergy with it. Um, first of all, the two um, the two interact in both of the oh. identical uh, focuses plus identical resource. Um, and then you've got the control aspect of both. So you've got the two discard on Tarkin and the one disrupt on Snoke, which is definitely uh, worth using. Um, the goal is both power actions a turn. That's or a round. That's what you want to do with it every time. Um, whatever you can do to set your board state up to get both of those power actions. Uh, that's eight. Um, I think uh, eight indirect, right? Eight indirect. Yep, exactly. Uh, you know, some people say they want to try to get you know six around. I'm trying to max, my mindset was always eight to 10. Um, I think with the amount of upgrades, that's a very good possibility, so. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you hit that two discard on Tarkin, you definitely want to pop him for one and, and blow up their hand, as uh, was done to me twice <laughs> in a row in the finals, so. Uh, which is cool, that's what the deck does, so. Uh, I love it. It works well. Um, lots of good health pull. You're not going to win a whole lot of battlefields these days um, unless you're running Vader. So you're looking at starting off with 24 health points. Um, and then um, does extremely well against Mill. Um, the Mill uh, matchups are always scary going into it, but sure. it never really felt bad uh, playing. I played uh, Millionaires and played the Yoda um, Leia deck. So. Um, good characters and you know sometimes if you get across somebody that's not familiar with playing it uh, you, they'll they'll run after Snoke first and which is great because uh, Tarkin is the he's the kind of the architect behind the deck. So. Tarkin definitely is the engine of the deck. The he, engine, he, he, right. he gets everything manufactured and going but I think it's a, a great point you bring up about how their die individually as characters are, are so well synergized together. The only difference Correct. is the two discard and the disrupt, and those individually work great together. Correct. So let's talk about your battlefield. Okay. Um, so it was a tough decision going with this battlefield. There's a lot of uh, nice ones out there, but we figured that uh, Theed was pretty unique these days. Yep. So uh, we decided to go with something maybe no one's seen before. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just... Let me read this card and make sure. I've right. never seen this before. Yes, it's another power action. So make sure you have a lot of power action tokens when you run this. Yes. Um, you know, like I said, most of the time you're not going to win it versus Vader. Um, and they will always take their battlefield trying to, you know, get that head start on the third resource. Every once in a while you'll get this. Um, the only issue with it is that once you get it, you don't usually keep it. So unless um, there's a round where there's a lot of control on your opponent's end and they... Uh, they wreck your board state pretty well, then uh, maybe you'll you'll run into the to the claim to try to you know uh, pick up the pieces and go into the next round. But a lot of times you'll get it that first round and um, go ahead and start off with that one, which is huge. So because um, you know you're trying to start your your first hand with a couple of um, um, upgrades, upgrades cheap upgrades, uh, a zero one. 
And then um, if you're starting off with three resources, now you've got a little bit to play with for removal. Okay. So what was your other option for a battlefield? You said you sort of came down between this and another. What would have been your, your alternative if you didn't choose Thief? Uh, thief. Thief. Yeah, so that th was, Thief that's and the Thief. Old, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's nothing else that really uh, has any synergy with So then let, let's ask this question. Do you think this card is the most overpowered card in the game right now? Mm, no. Okay. I think Fist is. Okay. Do you think this card is overpowered in itself? Because there's a lot of discussion in the community about we should ban this card, we should change it. What do you think personally on, on just this card alone? I think it um, brings parity to, to the field with um, your slower decks. Okay. So That's fair. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the, the meat of the deck okay. itself. Uh, let's start with your upgrades. Go All ahead right, and, and let's that. talk one by one. Okay, so we'll go with the obvious um, is your illusions. Okay. So that's pretty pretty much a staple there. Um, the rest of it is fairly cheap, um, and that's the whole point. You, you just need a lot of dice out. Um, the cubes, obviously. Um, cubes, the holocron, the holocrons, the ho and this is not a holocron package. It's it's a cheap uh, die that has a lot of synergy. Um, you know, I did have a, a little slick little play. Um, you know, you're always thinking, rolling out the dice, things like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't realize that, uh, you know, at the last second you can um, replace that with a force illusion, pop that back in your hand, throw it back down for the next round. So, exactly. Um, the four speeds, obviously, mm -hmm. more zero cost. Um, the most annoying card in the deck for <laughs> aggro is uh, Force Jump. It certainly um, is. Yep. So um, I know I played uh, Mended from uh, from some of the discords mm -hmm. in the top four. That's super dude, um, and it felt bad because that jump hit that special every time. And um, we even swapped the dice out one time he, just to make sure it wasn't the die. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you're talking about a card that's going to, it's soft removal that's going to uh, basically stay in your pool as long as you want. You can wreck their die with that special, roll it back out, and if it hits the blank, who cares? Because there are no bad die sides in this deck. Every, every side, every roll is a good roll, basically. I think you make a great point there with, with the blanks. Let's talk about how many blanks are in the field currently. So if you go one each... You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight blank sides on four dice. And guess how much all these four cost? One mm. resource. Yep. You can get four upgrades out on the first round if you draw correctly. If you don't lose your hand. If you don't lose your hand. Right. Between the discard here, the disrupt here, you have the ability to control their hand, control their resources, at the same time getting whatever you want to out on the field. Exactly. And, and building your board state, too. So, you know, if... Um, if I'm pulling, let's say, these two, mm -hmm. which is a good example, you've got just the, the zero cost upgrade and you got the spot blue. Um, this is going on Tarkin if it's first turn, and then we're rolling him out. We're not trying to build it up with this four speed unless there's a threat to lose cards in your hand. Um, the quicker he's out there with a die threatening with that four indirect, four discard, three resources, the quicker he's out there, the better off your state's going to be. Um, and then you can start building up Snoke. Um, the hand cannon, uh, depending on when you draw it, you know, you, you want to get that probably on Tarkin also because you'll max out Snoke on the upgrades. Now, is this the only weapon upgrade that you play in this deck? Well, yeah, that's it's, it. It's, it's probably it's, the only one you need. It's the most badass card in the, in the game. I it love, is. I love that card. It was a, my favorite card. The, the art on it, the, the two costs, the, um, the sides are ridiculous. I mean, when we did our pack busting that night, that was like, that was my prize. I wanted as many hand cannons as I could get. Sure enough. Um, with uh, some cool stuff coming from that later, you'll see from us. Yep. So, um, but you do have to be careful with it because of the limit on the upgrade. So, you know, early you'll go on Tarkin, late after Tarkin's dead, you may have to override it, um, put it on Snoke because typically he will be loaded up because of the spot blues. So obviously uh, a good, decent opponent is going to target Tarkin first because that's what they're supposed to do. They are 100% supposed so to kill So if, if you're loaded up like you should be with Snoke, you've probably got something like this after about turn two or something along those lines. Well, yeah, and then, you, throw, and then you chunk that in. Well, you'll have to override it. it just, yeah. It just depends. You know, if you're... 
you can get two rounds out of him, then you are way ahead of the game. You know, I kind of look at him like the Sienna reset. I, I need two out of her, minimum one, two. If you get two rounds out of him, you're doing really well because they should be targeting Tarkin every time. Is he better than Thrawn, you think? Uh, no. There's no red villain better than Thrawn. Okay. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, your perfect board state's going to look something like that. Um, not the – maybe the holocron on him. Yep. And then you can start <laughs> looking at the more expensive stuff, um, which are your abilities. Um, I ran one of each. Um, okay. I think Cruz and Brian ran two of the pushes, um, which is a good meta call. Uh, every side of that dice, like he says, is perfect. It is. Um, I don't like the synergy, though, with the range. I like to be able to resolve my indirect sides all at the same time. Every once in a while, it got kind of spicy if you hit the plus three on the hand cannon. Um, but the specials are what it's at. That It's a, it's a Vader hate card. Um, you know, trying to get that out there. I thought about this a lot. If I was to run this deck again, I would still I would pull it and run two ways. Um, that's my favorite card in the deck because of the sides on it. Uh, the synergy with the indirects, you've got the resource, and then you've got both of the specials. So that card completely wrecks mill of all time. You sure don't is. have to worry about the one coming back to hit you because uh, you're not take any damage anyway right. and then if you're going gets three wide mill if you get that out and pop that special off a couple of times that's that's brutal. it's brutal it, it is. is and so i i would run two of these i think the tulsa deck had two um this is a good card there's no doubt about it but i definitely would run two ways if i was going to take the deck again because you're looking at damage size of two two five and five so with Knowing that there's a couple more regionals, we have regionals this weekend and we have regionals two weeks from Saturday. Do you feel that three wide is going to make a little return, last minute return to the to the meta? And if so, this obviously has to be a two of if you go to another regional. Yeah, I would think three wide just because it seems like just the chatter that's the popular thing people want to default to because they're thinking they can uh, absorb more damage with a higher health pool. But uh, I don't know. It, this thing can hit a three wide pretty pretty hard also well, this is it, this is a beautiful right. beautiful card i mean so, all the way around even if you take one back on yourself in an aggro deck you're still doing five to one I, that, I, that's a beautiful ratio i think it's still a tier one deck and especially if you run two uh waves and the meta starts running three wide i think it's i think it's good i agree all right so let's talk about some events that you play well i got a couple other short time. Oh, okay so <laughs> i'm in charge not? here not you no i'm so, in charge you think so uh <laughs> cut Cut. So, um, the supports, um, we ran two fists, obviously, and then one of on the stifle, which probably won me two games, um, just locking out the opponent. So let's talk. Let's talk about this because right. in your in your finals match, you had you had a stifle play that got missed. So let let's right. walk, let's walk over that. You were you'd played stifle, you'd rolled out your dice, uh, cruising, attempted to play an event on you to remove right. a die, and you removed it. And about two actions later, you both figured out, hey, Stifle is still in play. So so walk us through that, how that happened, and how you were able to resolve it on both sides. Well, I didn't think anything of it but until you made a big deal out of it later. So uh, It was a big deal on the stream. Okay, well, and that's <laughs> what you said. Um, so um, I met Brian at Momocon last summer when I took my kids. So that was our big first big event was the Momocon deal with the GQs and the pods. And um, Brian and the Nashville guys, are, they just are super awesome. And I felt Absolutely. like we hit it off pretty good then. Um, then we went up to their store championship. I took my daughter up there. And again, just gracious people. So um, so Brian is who won the Louisville tournament. And he uh, offered me his home for the weekend. So I stayed in Nashville with him. We drove up that Saturday morning and drove back that night, um, which was cool to take one and two home together. <laughs> but um, so the point I'm making is, is that that was not a like a big thing that happened during the game. No, but uh, it we're, was just we're talking kinda, about gameplay mechanics right. and trying trying to make sure that that you, your board state is aware of you being aware of your board state right. and your opponent's board state so, at all times. So you know, long story short, nothing really transpired at that point that was uh, 
that had made any type of impact in the game. Correct. Uh, and the TO is the one that noticed it. So um, it wasn't a big deal. We just rewound it a couple yeah, exactly. of actions, or uh, yeah, actions, and that was it. So. Well, I think it, it, it was good on multiple events, mainly because it showed two solid players who understood that they could reverse the board state right. to a correctable point and, and move on and right. not make a big deal about it. I mean, you like you said, you guys didn't make a big deal about it. People in the stream were just asking, hey, did we miss a stifle? It was fixed, and we moved on. Cool. So, cool. Well, that's the way it should be. Too. And it is. And you obviously, the Vader's Fist, we, everybody's talked enough about it. It's, yeah, I it's mean, crazy. I didn't get them out every game. Um, there were a couple of games that I threw them back um, just for re-rolls or because I didn't want them in my hand because I felt like my board state was pretty solid as it was and I, sometimes with that card you feel like you're, you're forcing the issue trying to get it out. I think so. that's a good point. Absolutely. Um, so the events. Yep, let's go over the events. Okay, so let's How many did you run event-wise? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. So um, probes are pretty standard. Um, they weren't actually in the deck when I got to Nashville on Friday night, and uh, but Brian convinced me that that card was just too important. My thought process was that you're going to hit Tarkin's die every once in a while. That may be sufficient, but no, he was 100% correct. That is a two of. Um, that card, yeah, but you play it right, obviously. You got... You know, wait for them to play an event, or not event, a um, upgrade, upgrade support. support. Get that hand down to four or three, and then uh, and then hit them with it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which led me to um, the imposing presence, which will probably be a cut down to one. I didn't really feel like I had any issues with it, unless I ended up with two in my hand, and then I was wishing it was something else. <laughs> um, but the card makes sense to have at least one of them in there because of the Tarkin and the probes okay. and the Vader decks that are down to three cards really quick. Uh, the hidden motives, obviously that card is too, too cool not to have. Um, Jimmy DeHaan, we talked about this a little bit. Um, he thought maybe uh, some of his decks, he was cutting it down to one um, with overconfidence. I stayed with the two because I assumed that the spot on Snoke would be there longer than Tarkin, so the spot blue is not a problem. Um, Sounds like a good call. And when you can wreck two dice and get rid of one, that's a very good uh, card. Plus, um, it's perfect with a, you know, coming off the back end of a, of a hidden motive. And then the surprising thing is, I always keep it in there because of the um, Dooku Talzin decks. And that card wrecks Dooku Talzin, and I think I played it four times on Saturday, so I was happy to have that. Yeah. And then the same thing with the flight. Um, for the fest, for Mother Talzin, for the Shadowcaster, all that good stuff. And it's spot blue, so it's not a big deal. Oh, yeah? Um, one best defense. Um, you know, you could run two, but... Um, Did this card see a lot of play this weekend? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was the, the <laughs> thing that made me laugh the most. Is there was one game that I was playing against Mill, and he was up to like six or seven damage because I had popped him with that and then the Snoke power actions <laughs> and then uh, you know the thought crossed my mind that I may need to slow down before I before you kill him. him yeah so that was that was kind of funny um but I love that card it, it, it versus mill that's ridiculous it is you know you get rid of their two strongest die you pay one to do basically nothing to you to get rid of two Yoda dice or uh two Leia dice or whatever it doesn't even matter you know if you're playing uh, if you've got that they roll out Leia and they haven't commando rated you, get rid of her dice and be done with it. Okay. Um, two Beguiles, that is definitely going down to one. Okay. That was the most frustrating thing for me is when I ended up with two of those in my hand and I was paying for removal, uh, expensive removal. Exactly. Um, as opposed to uh, having something else to handle it. Well, it is very expensive. It, it's a great card, but like you said, two in your hand, it, it's going to kill it your resources. Bad. Because yeah. you almost feel like you have to play them because they are so good. Well, you, one is sufficient. I think uh, one is definitely sufficient. I wouldn't put a mind trick in there. Not yet. Um, definitely a feel your anger for the mirror match. I wish I had that card several times. Okay. Um, the imposing presence may be another deflect. I don't know. 
I'm not sure yet. Then let's talk about the last card you have. Okay, so this was the last minute tech card, which um, is pr it's pretty uh, popular in mill, but uh, you know, you were up here last weekend when we talked about this, yes. so uh, I ran the, the deck at my local last Sunday, and it did really well, and we were talking with me and Matt and Todd, and uh, Todd brought this up, and I was thinking, that's a hero card. And it's because you only see it in hero it in villain. I mean, hero mill yep. in the millionaires and the uh, Yoda Leia. So when I realized it was neutral, I was like, that just makes too much sense. Because <laughs> if you're running fist and you can get rid of their fist when it's sitting in your discard pile or anything else of importance, a force illusion, whatever the case may be, um, that felt really good um, to put in the deck. Unfortunately, I didn't get to use it all day Saturday, except for <laughs> once. I think I uh, I did it on somebody's Force Illusion, which was big. But um, I really wanted to flame a fist on <laughs> Saturday. I didn't get to. But, you know, of course, Brian got to do it in the top four. And that, you know, it's, I was jealous of that. Well, the beauty of it is it's either discard pile. So, so you don't have to worry about your discard pile. You don't have to be looking through theirs every round. If you've discarded a card, you know you want to out of their thing. You're golden. They're, they don't even expect it. If you're over there looking at their discard pile every time, they're like, uh-oh, here comes something. Yeah. Something's weird. I was sitting next to him oh, yeah. when he did that, and I looked over there, <laughs> and I think he looked at me, and I was like, I realized what had happened. He said after the match, the guy was like, yeah, I kind of saw that coming. Yep. And I was super jealous he pulled that off. So. All right, so you said one down to one Imposed Presence, one Beguile. What yeah. would be those two cards you would add in to sort of uh, tidy the deck up? Probably another Deflect okay. and a Feel Your Anger for sure. All right. I definitely want to Feel Your Anger in there. And then go to two Waves instead of uh, a Wave and a Push. Okay. Everything else seems like it needs to stay. So now that you've got a second place under your belt, you're getting ready to go to Covington in a couple of weeks. Yep. Do you have any ideas of what you're going to run? Don't nope. have to give anything out yet, but... Well, I mean, right now, if I had to choose, it would be this. Uh, but, you know, that's two weeks away, so who, who the hell knows by then? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, um, you know, with me, the Sienna Beckett deck was the most... Um, effort I put into anything in this game so you know even if I did have something I thought I was going to play it could change in a week or two. So. And one thing I, I enjoyed uh, in Cruzen's article this week he talks about having a deck that you really enjoy playing. Do you enjoy playing this deck? Is it fun for you? It, yes it is now. Um, <laughs> Friday and that's funny you put that in the article because uh, he, him and um, Justin damn near had me on Sienna Beckett because they said that Watching me play this, I was very uh, indecisive, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, but watching me play the Sienna uh, Beckett deck, that's like autopilot for me. So, um, but the deck doesn't do well in, in large events apparently. So, um, but now after running it all day on on a Saturday, it's very very comfortable to me. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. Maybe it's a double spot. Call, so. <laughs> it is a double double spot. Call. Yes. All right. Well, congratulations, Stephen, for yep, finishing the second. That's so awesome. Appreciate it. Looking forward to uh, doing some more articles with you soon. Cool. Guys, make sure to uh, like and subscribe to the channel, and we will be back uh, with some more videos in the near future. Thanks, and have a great night.